what I'm going to do next. Uh, but one thing that I know that I'm going to do next is that I'm going to get, I'm going to get better. And when the time uh, comes that that we're going to talk about contract, and we're going to talk about long, um, you know, long-term future with Milwaukee, uh, that's going to be that time. I'm going to be at that moment. But right now, after that, I want to keep, keep getting better. I want to focus on my family. Uh, obviously, I had a great meeting with uh, the owners, talked about the team, talked about what went wrong, what can we improve, and um, you know, as long as everybody's on the same page and as long as everybody's fighting for the same thing, not fighting every single day, which is to be a champion, um, I don't see, the, I don't see you know, why not to be involved for the next 15 years. I don't see, the, I don't see you know, why not to be involved for the next 15 years. I don't see that. I don't see. You know, why not be involved for the next 15 years? Throughout my career as a NBA analyst, I've had the pleasure of covering many interesting potential free agents, and I don't think there's been a single one that has been more captivating than the one of Giannis and Adekumpo. You got one brother with you in Milwaukee, another in LA. Have you ever thought about what it'd be like having everyone together? I think that would be amazing. Obviously, we spend more time together, and uh, I'm. 100% sure my mom would love that. But if we could like team up in a team in Milwaukee, LA, whatever, that'd be awesome. But if we could like team up in a team in Milwaukee, LA, 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 whatever, that'd be awesome. Uh, but at the end of the day, you gotta learn from everything uh, that goes on in uh, your life and in your career. And uh, hopefully, we can learn from this and um, you know get better as a team and uh, come back and hopefully, you can build a culture in Milwaukee that uh, for many years that we can come out here and compete every single year for the, for the championship. A mere week ago, he unfollowed every single member of the Milwaukee Bucks organization, including his teammates. And then a week later, he is once again committing to the organization after winning the MVP. So what does this all mean? How should we all take this? Well, we're going to dive into that in today's video. Because Giannis and Adekumpo's mind games are not only very fascinating, but they are extremely savvy as well and even absolutely necessary. Now, guys, before we get to the content really quickly, Last night, I had a very unique opportunity to play NBA 2K21 with my good friend Get Like Coop and De'Aaron Fox. Oh, my assist went down. Well, maybe if you weren't such a ball hog. <laughs> hey, I'm throwing it to people that's not making shots. I just made this build. <laughs> I mean, shit, you, you're yelling at me for ball hogging, but mm -hmm. you're not making shots. I don't, I don't, I don't know, this, you can't I don't know this was considered to be yelling, bro. <laughs> you, can't tell, you can't tell me about, about ball hogging if I'm throwing it to you and not making shots. And it was absolutely amazing. It happened at like 12 a.m. And if you were following me on Twitch, you may have had the opportunity to see it. But if you're not followed on Twitch, make sure you do that so you're there next time. It was absolutely awesome, and I have a couple clips of it that I can show you maybe in the future. My Twitch account's twitch.tv forward slash flight mic, and a link to that's in the description down below. I'm also giving away a PS5 on my Twitter account. A link to that's in the description down below. And if you want to support my content and just help the channel to continue to grow, I do this as a full-time job. Smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you think you've been here a couple of times and you've been clicking on my videos every single time it's been recommended to you and you're enjoying it and if you've already subscribed to me but you're not getting my notifications on youtube sometimes youtube is a little sketchy turn on that notification bell now that we got all that out of the way cue the intro When the Milwaukee Bucks got eliminated from the NBA playoffs, in my opinion, and I think in all of our opinions prematurely, I said that it was up to Giannis and Adekumpo to take advantage of the situation and leverage his power in the Milwaukee Bucks organization to make sure the appropriate changes get made. Because the way the Milwaukee Bucks assembled a roster to make a championship run for this season, at least this past off season, was absolutely inexcusable. Letting Malcolm Brogdon walk, in my opinion, and I know I 
bring this up a lot, was absolutely inexcusable. And their reason for doing that is even more inexcusable because they didn't want to dip into the luxury tax. Nothing tells your star player that you are not committed to winning a championship more than not being willing to dip into the luxury tax. You see, maybe 20 years ago, it wasn't a big deal, or even 10 years ago, it was acceptable. Hell, even a mere eight years ago, we saw the OKC Thunder trade away a future MVP in James Harden just because Clay Bennett didn't want to dip into the luxury tax. And I've said this over and over and over again. Don't blame Sam Presti for trading James Harden. That was not his call. His hands were tied. It was either Ibaka or Harden. Clay Bennett made him choose. Clay Bennett didn't want to win a championship because I feel like if all those players stayed together, they would have won. And the result was, well, one of the biggest what ifs in NBA history. And I would cover that in this video, but I'm a different Mike, not Corzemba. We're talking about Giannis and Atacumpo. And when you don't opt to pay the luxury tax for your team, well, you see what happens to the OKC Thunder will happen to your small market team as well. A mere few years later, Kevin Durant left to the Golden State Warriors. And three years later, the OKC Thunder had to trade Russell Westbrook and they had to blow everything up all over again, despite having one of the most savviest GMs in the NBA. Probably Probably the most savviest GM in my opinion, aside from Masai Ujiri. But you see, this latest tactic that Giannis Antetokounmpo is employing is actually brilliant because he's letting the Milwaukee Bucks know that even if he is a loyal individual, even though he wants to stay with the Bucks and maybe he even feels a sense of gratitude towards the Milwaukee Bucks for developing him, bear in mind, Giannis Antetokounmpo was extremely raw coming into the NBA in 2013. The guy couldn't shoot. The guy had like no muscle on his body. He was a huge project and hell, analysts even said it during the 2013 NBA draft. So maybe he feels a little indebted to the Milwaukee Bucks, but hell, Kawhi Leonard was also fairly raw coming out of the NBA draft and you saw what happened with him in San Antonio. He felt betrayed by the Spurs towards the end of his tenure. Then he demanded a trade and got traded to Toronto. So you see, while you might think these mind games of unfollowing his teammates and then setting up meetings with the owners and then affirming his commitment to Milwaukee over and over again might be a little unnecessary. In my opinion, Giannis Antetokounmpo needs to let the Milwaukee Bucks know that if they are not all in on winning him a NBA championship, then he is going to walk. It's not like MVPs pop up into your lap every single day. And this is probably the greatest player that the Milwaukee Bucks have been able to secure for themselves since the days of Oscar Robertson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And we saw what happened with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You see, in 1974, after Kareem was able to win a championship with the Milwaukee Bucks in 1971, and was also able to win NBA MVP three times with the Milwaukee Bucks, Despite all of his success with the Bucks, he still demanded a trade. What was his reason? Well, back then in 1974, no matter how good of a star you were and how important you were to the NBA, it didn't matter. If you were not in a large market, you were an absolute nobody. And that's especially true because these are the days before social media, but even today, that still exists in some degree. But you see, the Milwaukee Bucks struck gold over here. They don't want someone that wants to build his brand. They don't want someone that wants to move over to LA or New York for more fame. As a Matter of fact, it's not even that necessary to do so to build your brand. Giannis Antetokounmpo has 8 million Instagram followers. I don't think he needs to move to LA in order to attain more because he's an international NBA superstar. As a matter of fact, the Milwaukee Bucks have a huge opportunity to tap into Greece as well as a huge fan market. All they need to do is prove to Giannis Antetokounmpo that they are committed to winning. And there's multiple ways you could do that. You could trade for Chris Paul, which at first I thought his contract was absolutely horrific, but then I realized a year has passed since the OKC Thunder Houston Rockets trade back when his contract was way, way worse. And technically now you just have to pay a player that has a two year maximum contract, which isn't that bad because of course, Chris Paul said he's going to opt into the final year of his deal, which means 
he's going to become a free agent at the end of 2022. So this isn't like you're bringing in Al Horford like I once compared him to. Because Al Horford, if you guys remember, the Sixers signed him and he ended up being absolutely atrocious for that roster. If you trade for Chris Paul, you tell Giannis and Adekumpo, hey, we're going to do everything it takes to bring you guys some talent. And from there and on, you have this beautiful situation where if it works out with Chris Paul, fantastic. If it gets to a point where it seems like Chris Paul isn't the solution, but he's still a productive player, you could re-sign him in 2022 on a smaller contract and get both Chris Paul and Giannis Antetokounmpo even more help. Or if it doesn't work out after a year, well, you have Chris Paul's expiring contract for the 2021 to 2022 season to trade to bring Giannis even more help. And then the Milwaukee Bucks enter a scenario where they can pretty much treat Giannis and Adekumpo like their version of James Harden, where you keep on bringing superstars to see if it works out with your star. And whether it works or it doesn't, at least you're conveying to your star that you're an organization that's committed to winning. If you look at James Harden, look at what the Houston Rockets did for him after trading for him. Immediately, they went out and signed Dwight Howard. They poached Dwight Howard from the Los Angeles Lakers. And then when Dwight Howard didn't work out, they decided to bring in Mike D'Antoni because that's an offense that might suit James Harden a little bit better. After that, they decided to trade for Chris Paul. And when Chris Paul didn't work out, they tried to trade for Russell Westbrook. And yes, these all didn't result in a championship. But at the end of the day, James Harden's not going anywhere because he knows the Houston Rockets are committed to winning a championship. And that's what the Milwaukee Bucks need to do, especially because they're in a significantly smaller market than the Houston Rockets. So at the end of the day, are these mind games that Giannis and Adekumpo are, is playing with the Milwaukee Bucks necessary? Absolutely. freaking lutely When you let Malcolm Brogdon walk because you don't want to eat into the luxury tax and you decide to run it back the next year with a much worse team, you need to send a message to the Milwaukee Bucks ownership that you will walk if they don't step it up. To this day, by the way, even though Giannis said that he doesn't see a reason why he wouldn't be in Milwaukee if they're committed to winning a championship. He still doesn't follow anyone else but his brothers and Kobe Bryant on Twitter. Bless his soul. Rest in peace. So if I was to give Giannis and Netacumpo a grade for the way he's handling this situation, I'd give him an A. And if he was to leave the Milwaukee Bucks to go to the Golden State Warriors, I'd understand. I would 100% understand because it would mean that the Bucks just didn't want to win and he wants to take advantage of his prime. Let me know what you guys think about the situation in the comment section down below. I'm probably going to be back with another video soon. I'm your boy Mike and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.